Aristotle is widely regarded as the first theater of theories, mostly with writing poetics, a seminal work that became the origin of all subsequent theater criticism. This book left a profound impact on Western aesthetic philosophy and art, and its significance continues to this day. In this video, we'll dive into the historical and timeless relevance of poetics and how we can use it even after two millennia past its writing. And of course, with a little help from Marco Corleone. Written in the 4th century BC, sometime after 335 BC, it is a response to Plato's view on poetry. Unlike Plato, who believed that poetry as a form of art could be deceptive and misleading, Aristotle aimed to defend poetry against Plato's criticism. According to him, poetry and tragedy in particular could have a purifying effect on the audience, allowing them to experience emotional release and achieve a sense of balance and understanding. He recognizes three primary genres of poetry, drama, which include comedy, tragedy, and the satire play, lyric poetry, and epic. Despite their varied forms, these genres share a fundamental purpose, mimesis, the art of imitation. It is the creative act of copying or reproducing aspects of reality through artistic expression. The surviving part of the poetics predominantly revolves around drama, with particular emphasis on the analysis of tragedy. He defines tragedy as an imitation of an action that is serious, complete, and of a certain magnitude, in language embellished with each kind of artistic ornament, the several kinds being found in separate parts of the play, in form of an action, not of narrative, through pity and fear affecting the proper purgation of these emotions. He outlines the six essential elements of tragedy, plot, character, thought, diction, melody, and spectacle. He identified plot as the most crucial element of a tragedy. The plot then is the first principle, and as it were, the soul of a tragedy, character holds the second place. He stresses that a character's actions influence their moral qualities. Good, appropriate, and consistent aims define a character's virtues, and even if they are inconsistent, their inconsistency should follow a logical pattern. The hero's habits should generally tend toward the good, but they possess a tragic flaw, or hamartia, setting in motion a chain of events that ultimately leads to their downfall. Character is that which reveals moral purpose, showing what kind of things a man chooses or avoids. In tragedy, the protagonist experiences a reversal of fortune or peripatia due to their tragic flaw leading to a state of recognition or anagnorisis where they come to realize their mistake, and it must include a scene of suffering or pathos, where they suffer the consequences of their mistakes. The aim is to teach the audience how to become better individuals and good citizens by recognizing and purging their own undesirable elements, achieving catharsis, meaning purification or cleansing. Aristotle's example of great tragedy is Oedipus Rex, also known as Oedipus the King, a renowned play intertwined with the idea of fate. Written by Sophocles, this tragedy follows King Oedipus of Thebes as he seeks to end a devastating plague. Unknowingly, Oedipus unravels a prophecy predicting he will kill his father and marry his mother. Troubled by this revelation, he questions his true identity. As the truth slowly surfaces, Oedipus discovers he was once an abandoned infant, adopted by the king and queen of Corinth. Unaware of his fate, he leaves Corinth to avoid the prophecy. Fate intervenes, leading him to kill his real father on the road to Thebes without knowing and marry his true mother. Devastated by the tragic reality, Queen Jocosta takes her own life and Oedipus blinds himself 
in guilt and grief. Embracing his fate, he chose a self-imposed exile from Thebes. Though fate played a significant role in Oedipus' downfall, his pride is considered his tragic flaw. The play ends on a note of equilibrium, reaffirming the social order, even though the ending is not a happy one. The structure of tragedy can be summarized as follows. The beginning depicts the hero's prosperity. The middle involves the stimulation of the tragic flaw and a reversal of fortune, leading to a moment of realization. The end shows the catastrophe, where the hero faces the consequences of their actions. Poetics also laid the groundwork for the modern three-act structure used in storytelling. The structure typically includes an exposition in Act 1, a rising action leading to a climax in Act 2, and a resolution in Act 3. This format aligns with Aristotle's emphasis on the importance of plot development, climax, and resolution in creating a compelling narrative. We're going to take Francis Ford Coppola's The Godfather and see how Aristotle's poetic principles can be applied to analyze and appreciate the film. The film's first act introduces the Corleone crime family their world of organized crime, and the central character, Michael Corleone. The audience is presented with the family's struggle for power and loyalty. Act 1 sets the stage for the conflicts to come as the Corleones face threats from rival gangs and encounter challenges to their dominance in the crime underworld. Michael, initially portrayed as the good son, distancing himself from criminal activities, becomes entangled in the family's affairs due to a series of circumstances and conflicts. In the second act, the tension and stakes heighten as Michael's involvement in the family's business deepens. He takes on an increasingly prominent role and eventually becomes the new leader of the Corleone family. Act 2 explores Michael's transformation from an idealistic outsider to a cunning and ruthless crime boss. The plot thickens as Michael navigates false alliances, betrayal, and internal family conflicts. The emotional core of the film revolves around the consequences of his choices and the impact on those he loves. The final act reaches its peak with a powerful climax, culminating in a resolution that changes the Corleone family forever. Act 3 brings closure to the storylines, exposing the true nature of power and the price one must pay for the success in the criminal world. The film ends with Michael fully embracing his role as the new godfather, demonstrating his transformation from a hesitant outsider to a formidable leader. The godfather remains a timeless masterpiece, showcasing Aristotle's principles in successful storytelling and how we can achieve them. While the world of art and aesthetics has evolved over the centuries, the fundamental principles laid down by Aristotle in poetics continue to be a source of inspiration and exploration for artists. As long as there are stories to be told and emotions to be conveyed, his insights into the essence of drama and the power of artistic expression will continue to resonate with audiences around the world.